In this video, we're gonna show you how to stand to every single golf club in your golf bag and how effectively that can help transform your golf game. Hi everyone, my name's James Robinson. Welcome back to Get Good at Golf. On this channel, we aim to help you get good at golf Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right through the week to Friday. And guys, if you want bonus content, if you want giveaways, if you want meetups in the summer, then make sure you check out our membership over on Sunday Club. The link is down in the description below. But today, we are focusing on every single club in your bag. And we're gonna kick things off with wedges. You see guys, wedges are for me, the club that can help save your score. They're also a club that can help build your score as well. These are very much a defensive club at times, but sometimes they can be quite an attacking club as well. So it's really important to know, first of all, how we stand at this club, because if you don't stand at these clubs correctly, 99% of the time, you are not gonna hit the shots you want to play. So if I've got a nice short shot here, if I've got a shot where I'm gonna chip onto a green, maybe play a 40, 50 yard pitch, I'm gonna have the stands pretty narrow. The reason for that is I'm not trying to build loads of power, I'm not trying to create loads of speed, so I can just get a more controlled stance. I'm always gonna have my weight on my left side. You'll notice I've got a little alignment stick here to help me feel that, and from there, that's a really nice position just to allow me to rotate through. You can see how I still favor my left side through the shot. I don't release the club overly with the hands, but it's a really nice way to practice this just to make sure you stood correctly. I always want to have my handle forward of the ball, so I don't want to have the handle back. I don't want to present too much dynamic loft. And what I'm essentially doing there is recreating the impact position that I want to have at address. They're two nice, lovely ball flights. Obviously, this can change if you want to play a low shot, if you want to play a high shot, but generally, I'm going to have the ball around about in the middle of my stand so I know how much dynamic loft I'm going to deliver there. And if I have that consistent, then I should be really good at distance control. Distance control with wedges is a huge factor, and that's why we don't always try and hit them as hard as we physically can. Say if I now have a 100-yard shot, this is a 52-degree wedge, so I can hit this around 100 to 110 yards. I could probably hit it further, but I wouldn't be comfortable with that, so it would be a little bit pointless. I still have the ball in the middle of the stance, maybe a little bit back, but not too far. One thing we see is people who have, my dad does this really often, the ball right at the back of the stance, loads of forward shaft lean, and your problem with that is you just get far too steep, and that's where the ball finishes out there. You can even duff it on a mat, which is quite impressive actually, but if you have the ball nice and neutral, just in the middle of your stand, still have that handle forward, and we're still gonna have a little bit of a weight transfer here. So I'm gonna start with the weight ever so slightly on my left side. As I load up, I'm gonna move the weight into the right side and then transfer it back into the left side there. Now, if that ball position is nice and consistent, again, we should see a fairly consistent trajectory, which is gonna help you get consistent numbers with your wedges. Feet are no more than shoulder width apart, probably even a little bit narrower, because again, this is more a feel shot, this is more a consistency shot than say when we get to the driver later on in the video where you're trying to hit the ball as far as physically possible every time. Right. right, moving through the bag now and let's talk irons, because irons are definitely one of the clubs where you're gonna hit these the most. If you hit driver well, if you hit fairways, you're going to have mid irons in to lock the holes that you are playing, depending obviously on the course length and how far you hit it off the tee. But if you have a nice consistent stance with your irons, this is really going to help you hit better golf shots, hit more greens in regulation and generally lower your scores. Now, this can change, obviously, if you've got a nine iron depending right down to a four iron, but I've got a seven iron here. And again, that ball position is just forward of center. I don't want to have that too far back because again, that's gonna affect my angle of attack. I'm gonna get too steep. You're gonna see really low shots, lots of high spin shots. And generally you might see a lot of cut on them or a lot of hook on them as well, because it's very hard to deliver a consistent swing path when the ball is so far back in your stance. Yes, if you want to hit a low shot, you might move that ball back, but it's gonna take some practice in squaring that club face up. And again, delivering a nice neutral swing path. So if I have the ball just forward of center, again, I've got my handle forward here. From there, I'm gonna make sure I take the club away with my upper body to start with, then load into the right side by turning my hips and the rest of my body. And again there, come through into the left side. So what I'm effectively doing with a slightly wider stance here, I'm now exactly shoulder width, is I'm allowing myself to load up properly into that right side, feel some tension in that right leg, and from there, rotate off. A lot of people think you push off that right side. Your problem with that terminology is you start to slide into impact. That's gonna mean that you don't release the club head properly and you're gonna hit all sorts of shots. So make sure once you load up into that right side, you can rotate into impact and you can see that I can have a nice forward shaft lean because my left hip has rotated 
out of the way, making room for the hands. Then from there, I can get right into the top of the back swing. Now, if you do go into a longer iron, if you go four iron, five iron, the ball position might move forward ever so slightly because there's less loft on that club. And it's also a slightly longer shaft length. So you're going to be stood a little bit further away from the ball, but that's going to feel normal to you because all you're going to do is put a ball down in its position, let the arms hang here, and then just use the shaft length to get yourself into the position you want to get to. You're never going to be stood too far away with the toe of the club right up in the air because that's going to mean you can't have the desired takeaway and you're not really going to get the strike you want to have and you're not going to be stood too close to it with the heel up in the air because that's going to be very detrimental to your ball striking. So with your irons, shoulder width apart, ball slightly forward because we're not going to try and hit down on it too much, handle forward so you've got a little bit of forward shaft lean and from there it's all in the sequence to hit nice straight golf shots. Guys, now we're going to talk top end of the bag. We're going to talk fairways, hybrids, and driver. Guys, get in the comments below. Do you think you do this correctly? Do you think it could do with work? And do you think this is helping you get good at golf? So moving on to hybrids now, we need to think about what James just mentioned. So once he gets into a longer iron, he, the club's going to get a little bit longer. The shaft's going to be longer even, not the club. But then we're going to be a little bit further away from the ball. Once we're further away from the ball, we're going to have a shallower angle of attack. So we're not now trying to hit down. So think if you look at your hybrid or your fairway woods, do you see a lot of marks at the top end of the club? Is your strike near where we actually put a horrible mark on the top? Or is it very much high on the face? If that is the case, we know that you are probably having the ball position a little bit too far back and your angle of attack is more down into the golf ball and that's gonna hit high on the club face. If you're not getting the distance that you would expect from a hybrid, then that is probably why we are losing distance. So we need to think about ball position again here. If we're gonna go longer in the club, we know we need to get that stance a little bit wider so we have more stability. We still want to do exactly the same as James mentioned, which is taking the club away with the body, up to the top, and then we're down into this position, into delivery, and we can return the club exactly where we want. But obviously with a wider stance, because this club is longer, we're gonna swing it a little bit faster, so we need to make sure that we're able to stay in our angles. But the key thing here is ball position. So I don't want the ball position just ahead of center. I want now to get that much closer towards the front of my stance. So around about half a club head's width inside my left heel is gonna give you a good position of where we want that ball. That's gonna help us be able to be a little bit behind the ball here. It's a little bit shallower. We're still gonna take a little bit of a divot with this club. Then from there, I can get a nice solid contact. Get that launching nice and high and towards my target. You still see I'm transferring my weight all the way onto the left. My chest is over my left leg. I'm not angled back. Just because this is a longer club and we are a little bit shallower, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to help that ball into the air. that's what we see a lot and if you are topping your hybrids and woods, there's another video on this channel to help you stop doing that. But the main cause we see is people trying to help this club up. Now we're getting less loft, a lot of people try and add loft, and that's the biggest problem. Similar now, if we move up into a fairway wood, so the new Stealth 2 HD, we need to think about that again. We need to think about ball position. So now from a hybrid, again, Shaft is much longer. If we see here, we can see we've got two or three inches extra on the shaft. So again, we're further away from the ball. We're again going to put that ball position a little bit further forward because this is going to be even more shallow into that impact position. So again, now I'm just inside, probably an inch inside my left heel. From there now, I'm gonna take my setup. I'm not gonna get any wider because we don't want to go too far. From here, we can't have any kind of weight transfer. So just more than shoulder width apart. Same kind of thing now. I'm not trying to help this ball into the air. Exactly the same. Over, transfer my weight onto that left-hand side and chest is over my left leg. So that's the key for getting a little bit down into the golf ball, because we're still trying to hit down with these clubs. It is shallower than hitting an iron or a wedge, because that is what we're trying to achieve with a longer shafted club. James is now gonna talk you through his favorite golf club in the bag, and show you what we need to do to get that ball launching high with lower spin, and getting you that little bit more distance.
So guys, generally driver is going to be the longest club in your bag, unless you have some kind of long magical putter. It's also going to be one of the lowest lofted apart from the putter. So what do we have to do with our stance and setup to make sure we're going to put a good swing on this driver? You see, when we take golf lessons or when we give golf lessons, when we see people playing in pro-ams, all of a sudden, people might be beaten before they even take the club away. If your ball position is too far back with the driver, that's going to mean you're going to get too steep on the ball. It means you're going to put too much spin on it. You're going to put too much side spin on it. You're going to hit the big horrible slice or a horrible pull, depending how you then release the club. What we need to do is make sure that our sternum is behind the golf ball. So now this alignment aid is actually representing my sternum rather than the ball position. The ball's going to be on the left big toe, sternum nice and behind leaning back just a touch as well so we can put plenty of dynamic loft to that ball and from there i'm going to feel as though i have a nice wide takeaway the club head stays low to the ground this is called a shallow takeaway here from there i can load up to the top of the stance we've still got the weight on the right foot we're still going to make sure we have that weight transfer from there i rotate down into the ball i still have a little bit of handle forward a tiny bit of forward shuffling i'm not backing up and releasing the club too much that's going to close the face and obviously send the ball left. But from there, I'm in a much better position to make a good golf swing and get the ball down the middle of that fairway. Guys, that has been a surefire way how you can stand at each club in your bag. And there's one club left that we haven't discussed. Funny enough, we have a putting expert on this channel, so I'll leave it to him. So when we talk putting, the final part, and for me, the most important part of the game, because after all, this is the club you have the most shots with. Well, hopefully it's the club you have the most yeah, shots with. Yeah, you'd hope so. I'd, I'd be you? worried if you had the more shots with any other club. But when we're building a stance here, we've got to think about ball position. So a lot of people think, right, ball in the middle. Very similar to obviously what we've just talked about with irons. If I get the ball position in the middle of my stance, that club is still working down into the golf ball. If it's coming down to the golf ball, that's still going to be working out to the right. And you see there, well, I struck that well but it's missed the hole by a good foot and a half. So when we're building this stance, we need to think about, right, the ball position needs to be just ahead of center because if I was to take this stance and I drew a line straight up the shaft, it should go through your belt buckle, your belly button. And nicely here today, obviously, use a zipper on your shirt. If you've got a jacket on, you can make sure that that line goes straight up there. From here, I'm in a nice neutral setup where that club can arc in on the way back, arc back into square, and then arc in on the way through. If I do that, we're gonna have much more chance of starting that golf ball online and on the intended target if we want. The same as if the ball position moves, if my hands get a little bit forwards, that's again, pushing the face open and aiming right. And what we see a lot of times from there is people either have to open the stance far, very hard to judge, or we back up a little bit and we start to flick the wrist at that. So again, make sure that we're setting the putter first we then build the stance and we make sure the last check we do is that this shaft is going straight up the zipper on your shirt or on your coat and then we can make a nice stroke, get that ball started online and hopefully hole in a few more putts. So guys, that's been a way to set up with all the clubs in your golf bag. Hopefully if you can go through that and press at the driving range, that's going to help you get good at golf.